Welcome to the special edition of the Bob Fu Report. I'm your co-host, Jonathan Dingler, and today and next episode, we're going to be breaking down the top 10 cases of persecution in 2021. The following 10 cases have been selected by China Aid to exemplify the persecution of Christians last year. These cases, or multiple incidences, uh, were recorded to show you just how the communist regime is waging its war against the cross. Now, these cases take place in several different ways. Um, uh, They encompass all areas of China. They encompass both rural and urban churches, as well as house churches, as well as the Three Self Patriotic Movement. They also include not only pastoral staff, but general Christians, um, Chinese Christian dissidents, and uh, Chinese rights lawyers. Our first case today, we're going to be talking about seven churches um, whose meeting places were outlawed um, by local governments. On February 23rd, a house church in a village in Liaoning province received a notice from its local ethnic and religious affairs bureau that their meeting place was outlawed. Um, A lot of these churches, um, they don't have necessarily contemporary buildings like Western churches do with an atrium and uh, a childcare area or anything like that. Sometimes they meet in apartments, sometimes they meet in office buildings. It varies from church to church. This church in this local village um, received this notice Um, telling them that they had to get rid of all religious logos, uh, signs, get rid of their offering box, and stop all church meetings um, from this location. They also received a fine of over 200,000 yuan, which in U.S. dollars is approximately $30,000. From now on, I will be using U.S. dollars approximations for these fines. In March 21st, over 30 personnel raided Mount Olive Church, Um, They sent members home and sealed the church without showing any kind of warrant or notice, um, an illegal seizure of the property. Three days later, the same group came back with moving trucks and removed all church property, including chairs, projectors, crosses, and several thousand books from their library. On April 30th in Yunnan province, officials shut down a Protestant church because the members did not get vaccinated for COVID-19. In all three of these cases, we can see that the Chinese authorities pretty much use whatever means necessary to get rid of these churches. Um, They may go through a quote-unquote legal route by giving some kind of notice, or they may just come in with moving trucks and take everything away without showing any sort of documentation. Or... They may use COVID-19 as an excuse to get Christians to stop meeting together, um, which we've seen a lot in 2021. Our next case is uh, how Xinjiang province has persisted in cross demolition. Um, This is an area where hundreds of crosses have been demolished or taken away, um, and it's becoming more widespread and it's continuing. On January 15th of last year, a crew hired by a local municipal government um, used a giant demolition crane to remove the crosses above two churches, um, Yangzhang Church and Konghei Church. Konghei Church called the police station the next day because these are just regular construction workers. They were confused, and they wanted to report that their cross had been stolen and destroyed. But the police claimed that it wasn't part of their jurisdiction to look for a religious symbol. The second time, this is the second time their cross has been demolished. Um, In 2014, it was also removed and then replaced with a smaller cross. Five other churches in Winzhou, this area where these two churches are, five other churches lost their crosses to secret demolition on the same day which seems to indicate that it was a coordinated effort by the Chinese Communist Party. On the night of January 31st, over 100 security personnel broke into the century-old Shushin Church. They shot off the electricity and demolished the cross around 1 a.m. Their cross was previously demolished in 2014 as well. A small island um, as a part of Xinjiang province, it's called Kushan Island, has a very relatively large um, population of Christians. 
about one third of the population of 70,000 are Christian. And they have a tradition uh, for their fishing boats to have uh, crosses erected um, and to have uh, Emmanuel spray painted on the sides of the boats. Well, the authorities of Kushan Island have started to seriously crack down on these fishing boats. They are removing the crosses off of the fishing boats. They're not even buildings. They're just removing them off of the vehicles and they're erasing any mention of Jesus, Emmanuel, and all sorts of things. We're seeing that Xinjiang province, they initially had a wave of demolishing crosses and they went silent for years since 2014. And now they're coming back to these same places and removing them again. We're seeing that the Chinese Communist Party is relentless in trying to sinicize Christianity, trying to sinicize um, the religions in the area. And it shows that they're not going to stop. Um, if they come back six years later after demolishing uh, a cross just to, de to demolish its replacement, um, they're going to keep doing this for years to come. Now we're going to turn it over to Bob Fu, who's going to break down our next case. Thank you, Jonathan, for reporting the first two persecution case in 2021 in China. The third case I want to talk about is um, the resurgence of the uh, Lin Fen religious persecution case in Shanxi province. And that is the church known as the Golden Lampstand Church. Um, the, their leaders uh, were arrested again and facing a very serious criminal charges. In August of 2021, Golden Lampstand Church nine leaders were all taken into custody by this national security of uh, the Linfen city. And um, these pastors include pastor, uh, the senior pastor Wang Xiaoguang and another uh, main leader, uh, Miss Yang Rongli. Uh, so Pastor Wang already served uh, three years uh, back to uh, 2009 uh, when he was arrested um, at the first wave of persecution. And uh, Pastor Yang Rongli, uh, she was sentenced to seven years and served seven years, actually just released not long ago. Um, and the, uh, those uh, nine brothers and sisters from the Golden Lampstand Church, they were all approved uh, for formal arrest, according to the Chinese uh, criminal law code, on September 27th. 2021 under a totally fabricated charge uh, called fraud uh, because they are running uh, an unregistered church, a very large church. So here's the uh, kind of uh, some background uh, for you uh, that if you, some of you may um, recall that uh, the Golden Lampstand Church uh, is in fact a uh, unregistered house church group. Um, they are predominantly, um, the members are centered at uh, uh, the city of Linfen, um, not far away from the capital city of Shanxi province, uh, Taiyuan. So um, at that time, uh, in uh, near uh, in 2009, um, the church already had a solid um, uh, 50,000 members. I mean, 50,000 diehard believers uh, in the church, and uh, so I mean, it's not like a typical Chinese house church uh, worship in their own homes. Obviously, 50,000 members is too big. And uh, they were in, uh, spread it in uh, uh, some um, lo different locations. But the church uh, believers um, felt compelled um, to gather together as uh, uh, one uh, church. Um, so they um, uh, voluntarily um, 
made offering and, and, and contribution about 17 million yuan, which is about uh, two and a half million U.S. dollars, and uh, and complete a building um, in a uh, gospel. They call it a gospel shoe factory, um, which is owned by one of the church members. Uh, it is also a factory uh, producing shoes. I mean, because uh, you can tell from the name, it's called gospel show. Fuyin uh, Xiechang means the gospel, means uh, it's a Christian owned uh, with the deliberate purpose of that uh, factory uh, for the glory of God. So then um, on, the, uh, on September 13th, 2009, uh, 400 Chinese military police uh, raided uh, the uh, church meeting size. Uh, at the Golden Lampstand Church. And we actually had photos showing uh, that uh, the completion of the church, so it was a beautiful uh, church building. And in fact, uh, uh, the, the uh, church members had digged in uh, on the underground of the church that uh, they can, I mean, can hold a big gathering really on the basement of the church. Um, and uh, uh, during this uh, uh, violent uh, attack um, on that day, uh, more than 100 brothers and sisters were physically injured and um, damaged. And uh, government organized uh, multiple bulldozers and uh, excavators uh, basically uh, at that time uh, destroyed uh, some of the um, smaller buildings um, surrounding the main sanctuary, and um, the uh, and then um, from September 23rd of 20, uh, uh, 2009, uh, the government basically sent uh, armed police uh, with uh, like uh, uh, anti-right tanks. Uh, we also had images uh, about that surrounded the whole church building, 24 hour, seven days. Uh, a week uh, from September 23rd. Um, so that, uh, and two, uh, two days later on September 25th, uh, Pastor Yang Rongli and her six other uh, church leaders were all arrested. And uh, when they were about to travel to the province, provincial capital of Shanxi province, the Taiyuan city, uh, to really uh, petition to the government and the government uh, initially um, tried to buy uh, the church building uh, to exchange, uh, basically, uh, for not um, uh, take a, a kind of a, a, a violent uh, attack, um, and of course uh, try to forbid their uh, church gathering. Um, so the government uh, offered about uh, 1.5 million U.S. dollars, and of course uh, the church uh, declined and refused that offer. Um, so that resulted uh, the Pastor Yang and uh, other eight members. They were all charged with uh, uh, um, a uh, chart called illegal Occupi occupation of farmland and gathering a mob to create a traffic uh, disturbance, a traffic disturbance. So uh, Yang uh, Yirongli received seven years and a fine of uh, 30,000 yuan, which is about uh, uh, 4,700 US dollars. And her husband also received three years and a fine of 10,000 yuan about $1,500. Um, uh, dollars. And uh, Pastor uh, Wang Xiaoguang and uh, others, and uh, actually her and his family members, uh, several, were also sentenced uh, from three, four, some two years imprisonment. So um, the, um, the, the, the Lin Fen Lamb, Golden Lamb Stem Church, as I said, you know, 50,000 members. Um, sometimes in their annual gathering, they did gather on the farm field. And uh, I heard a lot of stories, basically, just to feed 50,000 people 
on the farm field, and that is a, a gigantic task. But they were so uh, brave and uh, really, uh, basically, that was the gospel meeting. Many people were attracted to be there, non-believers, and then a lot of them uh, had uh, come to Christ, and even some government uh, uh, kind of officials were there. Um, so, uh, but after the 2009 um, forcefully uh, read um, over 13, over 30, 30 meeting uh, sites were uh, totally shut down. Um, and uh, I guess that then the church had uh, really go underground uh, from that time on. And um, but from two uh, from 2009, I mean uh, to 2018, so nine years, the government uh, had uh, to uh, uh, have 24/7 um, uh, surveillance and surrounded by military uh, police vehicles and police. Uh, I mean, what kind of uh, taxpayers' money uh, they're spending? Just try to prevent any church member from entering into their own church building. I mean, we have uh, even the former uh, CEO of Voice the Mutters, uh, Jim Dahl, personally uh, sneaked in, I mean, not into the building, but nearby and took some photos showing the government uh, military uh, uh, anti-right police and uh, vehicles uh, were there, stationed there 24-7. Um, but on January 9th, in 2018, um, the Chinese uh, uh, government uh, decided to uh, demolish the whole Golden Lampstand Church, um, the, the, the main sanctuary. And they uh, demolished that church with dynamite. With dynamite. I mean, the, the church, basically the uh, military police buried uh, lots of uh, tons of uh, dynamite uh, on the basement and uh, just uh, uh, a bomb it and, and just uh, made an explosion. And uh, so that is uh, how the church was uh, uh, destroyed. Um, and then the, um, the, the, the church building, uh, after it was destroyed, um, actually during the destruction, we have some people were uh, um, standing uh, behind, I mean, uh, eyewitnessing. So we have some uh, extraordinary eyewitness uh, taken uh, live videos, um, photos showing how the church was exploded, uh, basically, with debris uh, all over. And, I mean, it's a huge, huge church building. Uh, that was uh, being totally destroyed. Uh, of course, uh, Golden Lampstand Church now are facing uh, more serious persecution. Uh, you know, in 2021, I think in 2022, we'll uh, expect uh, a major trial for these nine really uh, recently arrested, including Pastor Wang Xiaoguang and Pastor Yang Rongli and uh, uh, seven others. So please continue to pray for them. In 2022, uh, pray for strength. I mean, uh, the Chinese uh, Communist Party usually uh, very mercilessly uh, prosecute and uh, uh, double usually the sentence uh, uh, for those who are uh, called uh, committing repeated offense. Um, so this is going to be a huge, huge uh, persecution case. We'll keep you informed later on as uh, the uh, development um, uh, comes uh, up. So thank you. Um, we God continue to bless his church. Um, I mean, this is uh, certainly not a only church being destroyed in 2021 uh, and um, thousands of them. Um, but uh, since uh, it happened already in 2009 and then 2018, and now again. Thank you, Bob, for that report. Our next case... Uh, in our top 10 cases of persecution in China are the uh, collection of church-run schools that have been under attack last year. Um, the first of which was the Jordan River Learning Center, which is actually um, a school from Mount Carmel Church in Wuhu. Uh, on May 27th, uh, 
Authorities came into the church um, and confiscated teachers' cell phones, computers, and books. Um, they sealed the school, blocking access to equipment and student possessions. And they also took that the headmaster, uh, Miss Juan Hochschnia, and nine other teachers. Um, they ended up sending them to the detention center and charging them with illegal business operations. Now, all nine of these teachers and the headmaster, um, they all have, they're all financially vulnerable. Um, they work for the school, uh, they're not able to pay their fines, and they all have children. Um, so please keep them in your prayers as they find a way to support their families. Um, and you can also uh, donate to these families on ChinaAid.org um, under our Get Involved tab. The next school um, that was raided was in September of 2021. It was uh, Mize Christian Music High School in Harbin, which is the uh, capital of the Heilongjiang province. Um, this was a very famous case on the China Aid website. 30 officials came in, including SWAT members, um, and arrested teachers and students um, doing similar to what they do with these other Christian schools. They seize property, books, um, you know, curriculum, that sort of thing, holding uh, parents in jail or in detention centers. But they also took the principal, uh, Principal Shu, who um, he's still being uh, you know, charged officially. Um, but you can look for more updates on Principal Shu on the China Aid website as well. The next school was a Golden Reed Learning Center, um, which is actually a church-run school by Golden Lampstand, which Bob just spoke about. Um, as he says, this is a church that's been persecuted for many years, um, and this school is an offshoot of that ministry. Um, and so it's no real surprise that the CCP would directly target um, the school. Um, this was a school in Beijing, um, and it was raided in September. Um, they were given a notice that they were no longer allowed to meet at their location. Um, and this school was a pre-K through junior high, and it was mostly, uh, it had over 100 students, but uh, a lot of these students were special needs. Um, in the Chinese Communist Party and the China uh, public school arena, uh, special needs children are heavily discriminated against, um, and they're not even allowed to go to school. So this provided a way for those students to receive an education. Um, and once it was closed, it really shut off a lot of children's um, opportunities to learn. Um, so be praying for those families. Uh, in September as well, um, Abeka Academy um, has um, five agents uh, that work within China. Abeka Academy is a homeschooling curriculum. Uh, five of their agents and representatives were arrested, um, including Wang Jian, who organized some of the Chinese curriculum, um, which was just a huge deal. Um, Abeka Academy is widely used by Christian families to homeschool their children. Um, Wang Yi, Pastor Wang Yi, uh, heavily supported from Early Ring Covenant Church. Wang Yi heavily supported um, homeschooling your children to get them out of the brainwashing institutions of public school in uh, in China. Um, and on the same day, uh, a unnamed school from uh, Xinjiang, Jiangsu Province, uh, was also raided. Um, it was such in close proximity, not location-wise, but time-wise, to this arrest that um, a lot of Christians at the time saw this as a coordinated effort to really crack down on Christian education. And that's why it's so important for us to talk about and why it's included in our top 10 cases, because Christian education in China um, is really one of those institutions that's important, um, not only because children are able to learn about God and, and not be brainwashed by the Chinese Communist Party, but it's also an opportunity um, for parents to freely choose how to educate their children, and that's being quickly taken away from them. Our next case uh, includes the heavy sentencing of two um, house churches, um, one of them being the Kyle uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church and uh, Pastor Lu 
Li uh, Junkai of the Yangyang uh, County House Church in Hainan. Uh, so the Seventh-day Adventist Church, um, authorities have basically forced these uh, members to relocate um, several times in the 20 years that they've been active. Um, and in 2020, uh, there was an investigation that was launched by officials to basically find out how they could charge some of these uh, leaders. Um, and they ended up, that investigation led to four fraud charges um, against four Christians. Uh, Zhang uh, Wenying uh, was charged with 12 years for fraud. Um, Jiang Q was charged with six. Xi Jikun uh, was charged with five. And He Seking was charged with three. Um, and then we also see um, that Pastor Lee uh, Junkai was also sentenced for five and a half years um, back in 2020 uh, on New Year's Eve. Uh, both of these groups, um, the reason that we brought them up is because they both tried to appeal their sentences um, in the intermediate court in China, the appeals court, and they were both uh, denied in secret trials. Um, and so both of these groups um, they need our prayer. Um, they're in prison. They're trying to legally get their way out um, and to advocate for themselves. Uh, if you want more information on our top 10 cases, feel free to uh, look at China Aid's website. Um, they're under our publications under the annual persecution report. You'll find all of these cases in much more detail there. Thank you so much for watching and have a blessed day. Woman warrior, you were the target of that ancient serpent. You are the last and most beautiful of all creation, and that is why he hates you. It was through you that redemption was made possible. That day when the Creator entered into his own creation, the sinless seed through the nurturing vessel to birth the Redeemer. How confusing it must be to be led by leaders who despise you, use you, degrade you, and desire to kill you. But inside of you is a fire placed there by God himself, a fire that cannot be extinguished. You are his object of affection. The days have been written. The time has been set that only he knows. Trust in that, woman warrior. Be fearless in your resolve. Your enemy will never be like you. He may try to look like you, walk like you, talk like you, even attempt to take away your name. But he will never be God's object of affection. The serpent and his offspring will try as they will, but they will never be the last and most beautiful of all creation. They will never be a woman.